You can praise him on back to your seats this morning as we lift him up. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. It's this time of year that we once again celebrate your great love for us. That you came down. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him.
you are with us you are alive and well we celebrate you our God you ready to celebrate in church think about it God with us you're not
Thanksgiving in the heart. Everybody feel good in here? Are we glad to be alive this morning? Yes. Glad to be clothed and in our right mind this morning? Right? We're just going to have a little bit of fun in worship, if that's okay. All right. So there's this little part and it goes, we lift you higher. God who was and is and is to come. And so many times we think about that as like he was before the foundations of the earth and he is presently and he's going to return. But I just want to encourage you this morning. He was in your situations in the past. He is in your life right now and he is to come and work out your future. Whatever it is that concerns you, he is working for your good because he is good. He is working on your behalf because he is great. He is moving and making the crooked path straight because he is Father God, we love you. We worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. What a wonder you are in our lives. What a wonder you are in our lives. Hallelujah. All over this tabernacle in Elkhart, if you're watching online, lift your hands right now and give God your worship. Come on, worship him with a clean heart, with a pure heart. Worship him with your lips. Worship him with your body. Lift your hands. Give him the sacrifice of praise. We love you. We love you. Thank you for making us alive. Thank you for making us alive. Thank you for making us alive. Thank you for bringing the dead back to life. You're a good, good guy. And we love you. 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 We love you.
you our good kind of a praise. It's still Thanksgiving weekend, y'all. And in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, but in everything. Give thanks. Give thanks. Elder G read the word of the Lord Wednesday night, and he said, thanks is the password. Thanks is the password. Whatever you need to get into, whatever you need to get out. Join our online audience. Lift your hands and begin to give God a praise. Come on, everybody that came in here today, not to look at the praisers, but you determined that I'm going to give God praise these next 36 days until I see what God promised me back in January. If you're still looking for a miracle, praise Him right now. If you're still looking for a breakthrough, praise him right now. If you're still needing healing in your body, praise him right now. If you need your family to make a turnaround, praise him right now. If you need that job, praise him right now. If you want that bonus, praise him right now. I'm crazy enough to believe that if you praise him right now, the spouse that you've been I feel that. I need all the single people, all the single people, make some noise. <laughs> so, woo. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, but I need for you to get your spirits open. Yeah. So this is what I need for you to do. I need for you to get out your seat and go tell eight people God's about to change my situation. Go tell eight people God's about to change my my situation. Tell them, tell them God is about to change. Get out your seat. If you don't get out your seat, that means God's going to do nothing. Don't wait for them to come to you. You go to them and tell them God's about to change my situation. God's about to change my mind. God's about to change my heart. God's about to change my body. God's about to change my business. God's about to change this church. God's about to change this city. God's about to change this community. God's about to change my mother. God's about to change my father. God's about to change my brother. God's about to change my sister. God's about to change my son. God's about to change my daughter. My aunt is about to be changed. My uncle is about to be changed. God's about to change my grandpa, my pappy, my papa. God's about to change my grandmother, my mimi, my nemo. God's about to change my neighbor. God's about to change my neighbor's kids. God's about to change the other neighbor. God's about to change everyone on my street. God's about to change everything that pertains to me. Tell them, tell them God's about to change my situation. It's about to shift for my good. It's been working out for my good. God's about to change my employment. God's about to change my perspective. God's about to change everything that pertains to me. I tell you, tell eight more people, get out your seat. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Let's work this turkey off. Go tell eight more people, get out your seat. 
go tell, get out your seat, get out your seat. Tell eight more people, God's about to change my situation. God's about to change my situation. God's about to change my situation. I know you want something more. Give me that camera. I know you want something more. You don't need more. All you need to know is this. God's about to change your situation. God's about to change your situation. God's about to change your situation. smile. I see you out there crying. You thought you was coming here for religion. The devil is a liar, Laura. God's about to change your situation. You thought you was coming because you had to come. The devil is a liar. He brought you in here. Why? Because he's about to change your situation. I know there ain't many dollar students here. They're on their way back. But I prophesy to Tyler, God's about to change our situation. All right. All right. All right. All right. I hear you, sir. That's the sound of change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when God changed you, you don't look the same. You can't even stand in your seat the same. You can't even worship the same. If you know God is working on your situation, I tell you, express yourself that he changed it. He changed it. He changed it. Y'all, excuse me. Miss Paula, please excuse me. But I've been praying since we left church Wednesday. I've been using that password. Do we have that scripture, Pastor RD? Is it still in the queue? I want to show you something. Even if they don't, don't worry about it. It's in my heart. It's in my spirit. Hey! Because he changed it. He changed it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, he did. High five three people by you. High five three people. And tell them, my God. 
Bible. It says, enter with the password. Okay, I know you ain't got it yet because of what you're doing. So we're going to try it again. Enter with the password. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I know some of y'all King James folk. Benderites, don't worry about it. The Benderites, make some noise, don't worry about it. King James Version says, enter into his gates with, okay. So this version says, enter, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Enter with the password. getting better. Elkhart, I need for you to help Columbus online. Help us, help us. Enter with the password. Thank you. And I come to, to declare and decree that your days of working hard to get into the presence of the Lord is over. You just got to use two words. Thank you. Hey, watch this. Because after you use the password, because you did your part, because this thing is conditional, if you do something, now he's obligated to do exceedingly. Uh -huh. yeah. Hey, can I prove that to him through the scripture? 
Watch this. Enter with the password. Thank you. And then God said, make yourselves at home. Some of us, all our lives, in this season of pain, in this season of confusion, stress, in this season of wanting to get out, all you've been trying to do is get him to open the door. But God is telling us today that if you say thank you, the first thing he's going to do is invite you in. I don't know who needed to hear that, but I hear the Lord saying he's about to invite you in. Your days of being on the outskirts are over. You are about to come in. Not only are you going to come in, but in the next 36 days, what's so significant about 36 days? That's all we got left in this year. I looked it up sitting on the front row. For the next 36 days, and I'm getting out the way, God said that if you would use the password, thank you, you're not only coming into the house, you're about to sit down and make yourselves at home. And while you're sitting at home, I heard the Lord say this to me driving down 71 South on my way to see my family. He said, Germain, tell everybody you come into contact with that I am about to bless them. tells us that Jesus was teaching one day and it said the presence of the Lord was there to heal as he taught and it said the place was full of Pharisees and fake Christians and God wanted them healed but they said no I want to share this it doesn't matter who is in your circle does not believe in the power of God it does not matter who does not believe in revival. We are in it. And the presence of God is here to heal. Hey, hey, hey. Let's take it one more step. 
It does not matter what churches and what pastors and what denominations do not believe in the power of God. They can sit and they will watch, but the power of God is upon us here at World Harvest Church, and we are taking it to our nations, taking it to our cities, taking it to our hoods, because we are not holding back, not holding back. In the Passion Translation, it says that as Jesus was teaching, there was a surge of healing power that shot out of him. There's a surge of healing power coming out here today. Every day, out of our lives. That healing's here. Healing is here today. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands up. Come on, thank him right now. Thank him right now for that power. Thank him for that healing. Thank him for it surging through your body right now. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. For where the Spirit of the Lord hangs out. And he hangs out here. He loves it here. There's a freedom. There's a liberty. And it's flowing right now. Flowing right now. Thank you, Jesus. There's lower backs being healed. Oh, those discs that have given you hell for a long time yes. are being healed right now and yes. online. Yes. In Elkhart, all yes. over our nation, yes. there's a healing taking place. Start to move that back right now. Yeah, Start yeah, to yeah. bend over right where you hallelujah, are. Hallelujah. We got to stop making excuses why God won't do it. Yes. He loves to do it. Yes, he does. Loves to do it. There are a whole bunch of people online in here that Father God is healing the ligaments and tendons in your knees. Some have had knee replacements. It does not matter. Jesus is doing knee replacements right now. And there's a healing back. We can walk in praise and lift him up high. Hallelujah. Whole digestive systems. Whole digestive systems are being worked on right now. Come on, right now. Right now, just take that in Jesus' name. Just take that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Our Jesus is the, he's the chief surgeon to take care of hearts. Yes, yes. Spiritually, yes. emotionally, yeah. and naturally. Yeah. And there is a, there's a wave right now going through, going through hearts, going through arteries right now in Jesus' name. Blood pressure being healed. Yes. No yes. more thick blood, thin blood. You've got Jesus' blood and it's ministering right now. Come on, just take that. Get the cares and anxieties off that right now. Come on, Jesus is, I want to share this. Jesus is a little frustrated that just like Jesus said, he went some, he went to minister his hometown and he could only do little things. They had little sniffles, little colds, and Jesus is standing there saying, I want to do a complete overhaul yeah, yeah, in yeah. your bodies. Yeah. So let's get rid of the little sniffle faith. Let's let Jesus move by his power of grace right now all through our bodies because we're in our greatest day, in our greatest hour. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Families that have had chronic conditions with their children. And there has been a lot of tears and a lot of long nights and sleepless weeks and months. The Father God wants to share, there's been somebody that's been just shedding a few more tears than mom and dad, and that's been our daddy God. And he's coming in right now. Yes. And there is a healing yes. coming to those children because Jesus said, get those adults out of the way. I want the children. I want the children. Even the disciples said, hey, get them out of the way. And Jesus said, disciples, you better watch it or slap your face. He said, bring the children to me. There is such a healing wave. Jesus. Our children, Jesus. our teenagers, yeah. our young adults, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Yes. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. He's here. He's here. So healing in this house. Manifest at peace to come. Yes. Troubled hearts with healing balm. Yes. There is 
healing in this house. There's restoration in this place. There is mercy, there is grace. Though your heavy laden go, bring your burdens one by one and leave them here where they belong. There is healing in this house. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. There's healing in this house. He's here. He's here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Reach out to him. Yes, yes. Troubled hearts with healing bone. There is healing. There's restoration oh. in this house. Oh, Jesus, thank you. There is mercy, there is grace. Though your heavy laden tongue, bring your burdens one by one and believe. As we're in the presence of our Jesus and our Father God, the Holy Spirit, so sweetly here. You can just, just reach out and hear the Father say, I want to thank you now. Thank you for walking with me. Thank you for serving me. Thank you for not letting go. Thank you for being strong when others have run the wrong way and given up and thrown down their hands off the plow. Thank you for running for the lost and the hurting and for revival and for Jesus and for each other. For the vision and for pastor. Thank you. There's a complete overhaul taking place right now in our yes. emotions. Yes. yes. The strings that maybe have been wound too tight or come apart. Mm. The areas that have come in with pressure and anxiety and stress. Pain and hurt and anger, depression. Yes. Things that we thought that God wouldn't take care of or we shouldn't come to him about. There's a fine tuning going on so that we are finely tuned to be with our Father and to be with the Son and to walk with Him and talk with Him and yes. be like them. Yes. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven because Jesus came right, and He right. said, The kingdom of God has come. Yes. He's here. And He looks to and fro to find a tabernacle in a house of God and a pastor like ours and a people like we are and saying I want to do it and we're saying Father you have found that place we're coming after you this is your place your treasure house yes there's a healing in this place not just today 24 7 Whew, there's a healing the yes. weights the weights that have easily beset us are off yes. they're off now forever we're now starting to run the race. The, the training is over. The training wheels are off. Everything in our life has got, it to, got us to this place. Yeah. The good, the bad, and the ugly. They've got us to this place. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We're running the race to win now. It's revival time. Yeah. Whew. Church without spot or wrinkle. We often think of that being so universal we forgot what it means, but that means us personally and right here at World Harvest Church, we are that one without spot or wrinkle for Jesus and our Father. Can we give him one more little praise and a big praise and a heartfelt praise and a loving praise that we love him? Oh, we love you. Everything we give to you, everything we give to you, it's our life we give to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, good morning, World Harvest family. I'm so glad we're in church. I'm so glad it's Thanksgiving Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you? Wow, this is what God's been waiting for this whole weekend today. 
Let's all be seated. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to you because you're dynamite. Your love and heart for Jesus. When you walked in here, Jesus said, I'm about ready to explode now. And he's just begun. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank you. I'm so thankful for our pastor Parsley and the first family. We love you so much. Thank you. We don't say thank you enough. Come on, let's do it. Woo. Hebrews says the builder of the house gets more honor than the house. We give honor right now to pastor or apostle, first family. And we give thanks to our Father God and to our Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful. Come on, give a big another thanks to him because he's here. He's here. That's what it's all about. We want to say a big thank you to uh, our guest today. I know that you may have come with a family member or a friend, and we're just, we're just honored that you're here. We don't want this to, this to be like going through a drive through at a, a quick, a quick you know, drive through restaurant. I know a lot of those aren't very fast anymore. But we don't want you to feel like you're just, you know, driving through here. We're more than a, more than a takeout window. We're a place for you and your family. Where what you sense today is, wow, I've never felt this anywhere else. That's the love of our Father God. That's the reality of Jesus Christ. And that's the love that we have for him and for each other. And we want you to be part of it. So thank you very much. You've taken your time to be here. And I want to encourage you. It was not you that just had that desire to come. God has brought you here and he's planting you here. This is your family and you don't have to look any further because joining a church is not like a consumer thing where you just try things out. God plants us and puts us and we love each other and we grow and increase and become all that God wants us to be in a cool place, World Harvest Church. And behind me, there's a number that'll be on there. For, it's called a VIP number and that's who you are. You're very important to us. I'm going to ask you to text that. We want to get to know you. We want to encourage you. We want to get you planted in your children and kids harvest and your teenagers and next harvest. And we want to get you involved in all areas. And we want you to fulfill your purpose and destiny on this earth as you do love God and you love people. And you won't find that at very many churches because they've sold out the wrong way. But we've sold out the right way to Jesus. And we want you to become so dynamic as a son or daughter of God. Touching people and touching Jesus right here at World Harvest Church. So we want you to do that. If for some reason you didn't bring your phone today, which is also all right, there's a card right in front of you, our VIP card. I'd love for you to fill that out and drop it in the offering. In just a minute, we want to get to, we'll call you up. We'll track you down. We might even knock at your house in the door at midnight to say hi from World Harvest Church. We love you and we're taking care of you. So we have that. And December 16th, everyone say December 16th. That's not the rapture. That's next steps. And it could be too. Prophetic word. <laughs> you know what? We want to make it so simple for everybody. On the 16th, we have, after the powerful morning service with Pastor Parsley, we have a, a real lunch and a get-together and love and training session that goes right through that door there in our, our, our Dream Team Central. I would like you to grab this card. Please take it. And place and say, this is my church and I've, I, you might have been here 50 years and you haven't gone to a next step harvest. You were here 50 years, you were in the parking lot for 10 years, but we're glad you're here and you finally made it. But we want you to find out about what Father God's got for your life. We want you to be planted here, loved here, taken care of here, but use your gifts for touching the world for Jesus. And right here at World Harvest Church. So in our next steps, it'll be a luncheon together. We'll find out about what God's doing here. We're going to hear from pastor, our pastor, Pastor Parsley during that time. We have a fantastic lunch. And we get to be loved on. We get to be planted and cared for. Next steps, December 16th, we have child care. I want to see you there. I'll reserve a place for you, but you've got to fill this out. And I don't want you to miss it. We had a great one last Sunday. December 16th isn't that many weeks away. So that's for you. And as we walk out today, we have our Connect Centers. You can also sign up for you and your family and your children in your neighborhood. Okay, we can do it all. Praise God. It's Thanksgiving weekend. And it's a thrill for, for us on the weekend. Being from a different country, we're not used to having four Thanksgiving days. But I'm glad we're taught to have a whole year of Thanksgiving and a life of Thanksgiving. And I want to thank you for that, putting it in our hearts. And having us here as your family. Now, 
It's time to bring our thanksgiving to Father God. It's time that we're going to invest this morning. It's time that we're going to sow our seed this morning. And it's, it's time that, 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 that we are going to worship our Father God with his substance that he's blessed us with. Can we have an amen on that? And, a, and, and we're going to take two minutes. I'd like you to grab your Bible. If you don't have one, take your neighbor's Bible and pretend it's yours. We'll never know. But grab it because when you run verse real quick, or two verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, passage, passage, Passion Bible says this. How do we know that we're being poured out? God's grace is poured out right here in World Harvest Church. And when our pastor parts, he's been sharing about grace. It's because he's tracking the Holy Spirit. And there's such grace being poured out in our lives. And look at the same thing happening to the church of Macedonia right here. It said, beloved ones, we must tell you about the grace of God that's been poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. This morning, as we're about ready to worship and love our Father God, there was a grace of God that came on the Macedonian churches at Philippi, Berea, and Thessalonica, which was not on the other churches. They were missing it out. And here, Paul, in all his love, is hitting the Corinthian churches in us and saying, hey, there was an amazing gift of grace being poured out on these churches. And he said, I want you to have it too. Let's read real quick. He said, for even during a season of severe difficulty and tremendous suffering, they became even more filled with joy from the depths of their extreme poverty. Super abundant joy overflowed into, a, into an act of extravagant generosity. Everyone say extravagant, extravagant. Generosity. generosity. Voice translation. The Bible says a wealth of generosity. Now let's take three quick little points as we get ready to, to invest, to worship God today with his tithes and offerings. We're going to let, we're going to let God blow the roof off our financial conditions because we're in a spirit of grace. Say grace. Now here it is. He said, Paul, that this, that they had this grace on them. This grace showed up, this power, this strength of Father God in them and through them. In a season of testing, in a season of problems and troubles and trials that made them hurt inside and hurt on the outside. But during that time, they got closer to Jesus and they just burst out with great joy. May I encourage us that we go through tough times and we go through problems and suffering. The biggest thing our Father God wants to give us is another dose of his joy that comes on the inside that no matter what hell we're going through, the devil looks at us and says, I can't figure you guys out because on the inside out, you are full of joy and contentment. Now here's a quick word. He said... He said the Macedonian churches passed the test. Passed the test. And the Spirit of God is saying, World Harvest Church, we have passed the test. And the troubles and the hell and the problems and the suffering which God allowed to see us get through and pass the test. We've done it. Now come on everybody. That should get you doing cartwheels right now. Because your day of trouble is over. Now. And in that it said. And grace hits us. In the midst of their hell they were going through, they gave the greatest giving that they had ever given to the point that the Apostle Paul said, I am putting my reputation on the line and I am verifying it. I have never seen any Christian, any church ever give like this in their life. They are experiencing the grace of God at the Macedonia churches. In the giving, but also in what that grace did. They did not stay poor. They did not stay beat up. They did not stay defeated. Because we go down to verse 9, and that's where we miss it a whole bunch of times. We read the verse, and we forget it. In verse 9, it says, We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he, be, he was rich, though for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty we can become rich. We read that, and we forgot about it. The translators didn't do a good job as we get ready to give right here. And we're going to, in just a minute, get everybody ready. But let's grab this. It really means that Jesus Christ became poor so that he can make us rich. The word there is make. Make us. 
And so the church of Macedonia, here it is, number one. The grace of God was poured on them because in their great seasons of trouble and trial, they allowed God's grace to come on them and they gave the message. Bible said in the midst of trouble, they gave a trigger and the trigger was their giving. And that trigger allowed Father God to bless and make them rich so they could be a greater blessing. This morning on this Thanksgiving Sunday, there's a big screen behind me that you're all seeing right now that we are going to pull the trigger this morning and allow God's grace to hit us in our giving and in our receiving. Jesus Christ has paid the price so that we can get rid of poverty and lack and shortage because Jesus has a vision and a will to be completed and it takes a lot of finances. And Father God wants us blessed, each one of us, to be a blessing, both of them. So this morning, there's envelopes that are right there. I want you to take one and this morning we're not going to pass this one by. The grace of God is here. It does not matter what we feel or we do not feel. The grace of God is always upon us. And this grace is saying, I want to lift us out of the test. I want to lift us into prosperity. But the trigger to receive that grace of God's abundance is the trigger of giving. We pull the trigger. There is our smart giving because we're all smart. We can use our text giving right then. Thank you very much. The envelopes are there. We take do checks or do credit cards. El Cart, you're with us supernaturally. There's a spirit of grace being poured out on El Cart in the financial realm of giving and receiving. And for all of our online wonderful family members that join us online all over the nation and nations, please join us today. Follow the prompt right there. There's a place that you can click and you can join us. This morning, Father God is pouring his grace out because he loves us so much. Get ready. You passed the test. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name this morning. What a privilege we have to be with you. Your healing, your grace is here. We are honored to be part of World Harvest Church. And we thank you right now for that grace that was so poured out on the Macedonia church is poured out upon us in such multiplied ways right here at World Harvest. We thank you, Jesus, that it, that grace pours out in our giving. It was such a place, it's like Paul said, I just about had to tell the ushers to tell them to stop. That's how big it was. They just came in with their giving. A power to give, Father God. We don't look at what's around us. We love to give to your kingdom. Grace is upon us. And the grace of receiving now, Father God, that Father God, Jesus Christ became poor so that he is making us rich. That grace is on us. Supernatural turnarounds now because we're blessed to be a blessing in Jesus' name. And we all said together, and we all said together, we're going to worship God as we give today. Grace is being poured out upon us. Praise you in the flames, praise you in the promise seat. 
I'm standing by my side And I know you are always moving I know you are making all things right of the World Harvest Church in Elkhart handed out hundreds of Thanksgiving meals today. That church handed out turkeys along with side dishes. This is the second year the church has done this type of giveaway, and the pastor says he and the congregation feel it's important to take care of the community. Our heart as a church is love God, love people, and if you can't do that second part right, then everything else falls apart. And the church hopes to do this again next year and increase the number of turkeys. Somebody say, love God, love people. Can we give a hand clap for Pastor Manny and World Harvest Church Elkhart? Love it on their community. Now, we just want to share a little bit about this. By the way, I'm Cameron. Been part of this church for 11 years. I know sometimes we don't introduce ourselves, but it's so good to have you here this morning. And you just saw Pastor Manny, the campus pastor of World Harvest Church Elkhart. So here's what they did. Last Saturday, in the weeks leading up to it, they contacted nine local schools and the local fire department to pinpoint the exact families that needed meals on Thanksgiving. Because of that, check this out, the pictures behind us, they were able to minister, the dream team, to 250 families in Elkhart, Indiana, and not just give them food, but they prayed for them, they believed for healing, they ministered to their bodies. They were the church in Indiana, so Pastor Manny, we love you, Elkhart. Is that not awesome? Wow. Amen. Well, you know what? I don't know if you saw a couple weeks ago as well, our own Harvest Prep kids were packing meals for kids over in Haiti. Do you remember that? So we got Haiti ministering. We have Indiana ministering. We have our online audience ministering. And now we got something going on right here in Columbus that you guys can be a part of. Roll it! It's The Big Give, and World Harvest Church is teaming up with the Columbus Fire Department to donate over $50,000 in new toys for families who could use a little Christmas cheer. This year, we're expanding our donation options so you can help us surpass our goal. You can text to give the amount WHC Toys to 45777 or go to whc.life where you can give or use our Amazon wish list to buy toys online and have them shipped directly to our warehouse for your convenience. 
As always, you can still drop off new, unused, and unwrapped toys at any of the Big Give donation locations in all of our Connect Centers. Get your Christmas gifts in today. The deadline to donate is December the 16th. Who is ready for the Big Give? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You ready, Pastor? Hold up. Check this out. Wait for it. Wait for it. Is it doing it? It wiggles. It wiggles and it lights up. Yes. We're so excited. Listen, for the past two years, uh, here. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> as funny as it is, I don't want it to distract from the kids. All right. So this is really cool. For the last two years, we have teamed up with the Columbus Fire Department to bless families all around Central Ohio. Here are the numbers just the last two years. Are you ready for it? Not 5,000 toys, not 10,000, not 15,000, 20,000 toys in just two years that we have blessed our community with during this holiday and Christmas season. And, and you know, but before I can talk any more about what we're doing this year, where are my elves? Elves? Oh, here they are. Let's give a round of applause for our wonderful elves. Come out here, guys. Come on. Oh my gosh. Look at little Christopher coming. Christopher, this way. Rudolph has gone wild. Come on, little Chris. Stand by Krista. Yeah. Can everyone just go, aww? Hey, are you guys excited for Christmas? Yeah. Are you excited to give away toys to all of our community? Yeah. So listen, we're making it so simple for you guys to do this. Three ways that we are collecting toys, okay? Number one, you can bring them right here to World Harvest Church. All three Connect Centers, we have huge Christmas present boxes that you can't miss to fill toys with. Now we're looking for new unwrapped toys, ages zero to 14. Say zero to 14. Zero to 14. And look at this, you know what I love? We got things called Dollar Trees and like 50% off racks over at Hobby Lobby. Because for how much money, Ra Ra, can we get all these toys right here? Only $20. Only $20? You should be a salesman. So look at what you can get for $20. A football? Who wants a football? There you go, here, take it. Take it, William. Uh, you can get a soccer ball. Here you go, Princeton right over there. You can get a puppy, a remote control puppy dog. No, no doo-doo to clean up after, it's really easy. Basketball, there you go. You can get a baby. Who wants a Tickle Toes here? We'll put it back there. You could get a blue hippo. Who wants the blue hippo? There you go. Here, we'll give it. We'll share it. Make sure we share it with other kids. But listen, it's so simple. $20, you can get this many toys and even more. But not only can you bring them to the church. We're making it so simple for you guys. Look up there. You can get your phone out right now. And text to give, smart giving, 20 bucks or 50 bucks or $100 or $500 or $20,000. All you have to do is text the dollar amount, WHC space toys to 45777. On top of that, maybe, you know what, Cameron? I love shopping online, but I don't know what toy to give. Have you guys ever heard of an Amazon wish list? Say Amazon wish list. You can go to whc.life right there on our homepage. You scroll down, see that link right there? There it is. You click on it. It takes you to our exact Amazon wish list with all the toys already pre-selected. So you can stick them in your shopping cart, buy them, and they don't ship to your house. They ship right here to World Harvest Church for us to sort them and then take them to the fire department. Is that not awesome? Here we go, guys. So we only have three weeks. Somebody say three weeks. Say it again, because I, I think someone was texting to give, which is great. But say three weeks. How many weeks? Yeah, it's Christmas time, y'all. Get used to it. All right. Three weeks. December 16th is the deadline. That is a Sunday morning. And we're just so excited to help our community. Again, Elkhart's doing it. We're doing it around the world. It's time. We're the biggest church in Columbus. Let's bless them in the biggest way. Amen. Now, I think there's one more thing you guys want to tell everybody. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let's give them a round of applause. You guys can go back. Yay! Oh my gosh, this is the best time of the year. That's, oh, I just love the Christmas music, Chris. Oh my gosh, 
Christmas music. <laughs> you were born to worship this season, sir. Oh, that's all right. It's the little things that make me happy. Hey, you know what else that makes me happy? We just talked about Amazon. How many of you remember a certain book launching this week? Grace from our pastor, Rod Parsley. Well, listen, all of you, all of you watching online showed up because Pastor Parsley's brand new Grace book hit not number five, four, three, or two, number one on the Amazon hot new releases list. Stay standing on your feet because he's getting ready to preach from that book right there. Spoiler alert, if you haven't read it, you're probably going to hear some stuff from it. But make some noise. Let's give a round clap of hand clap for our pastor, Rod Parsley, as he comes to the stage. Woo! Good morning, everyone. It's a great morning, right? Got to represent. No one, no one was anticipating that. Wouldn't it be amazing if God did something for you today you weren't anticipating? Like if he won so big in your life, you were just like... Like you just wanted to just say, is this real life? Like God is so good to me. Is this real life? That was it. He is that good, didn't he? Everybody say hello to my baby. It's so good to have you. You want to do my sermon today? You'll pass? Wonderful. But you had an intuition in your heart. You shared with me. And you can be seated. I'm so sorry. You may be seated. But you had what some folks would call an intuition. Uh, have you ever heard the term woman, women, woman's, a woman's intuition? Mm. Have you ever heard, well, I just felt led? The problem with most Christians is the only lead they ever feel is in the seat of their pants. That's funny. I don't care who you are. Y'all need to lighten up a little bit. You still got too much turkey in you. Uh, so were you ever frightened, like really, really frightened, like suddenly frightened? Anyone? Raise your hand. Come on, some of you pay. How much did it cost to go to a movie? $15. Huh? $15. That was all. We have a few of the Valor students still here, and they all go to $5. $5 Tuesday, that's what. Oh, look at all the Christians. I need a $5 movie because we're poor. Shove somebody and say, I'm rich, but I'm frugal. That means you're tight. Anyway, and you, you go to a movie and, and suddenly something comes on and everybody, everybody goes like that. You know where that comes from? You feel it there, don't you? Deep, 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 deeply within you. That's where the seat of fear is. Now the issue is that that's also where faith lives. And fear and faith can't sit on the same throne. Fear and faith can't be in the same heart. Fear and faith can't be in, your, in the words of the same person. Because the one cancels out the other. You should have just shouted because I just told you that your words of faith could cancel out any fear, any trepidation, any worry, any concern that you have. How about Elder G and Pastor Cal this morning? My goodness. Woo, I could go home now. I've been blessed. It's good to have Miss Lisa back this morning too. 
healed by the power of God. But anyway, I, I, I'm trying to teach you something right now. Uh, stand up here with me. It makes me look better. I, I'm trying to teach you something. So, as believers, we have to learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to try again. We have to learn. It's essential. Show somebody and tell someone. It's absolutely essential that you learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. How many of you think the Holy Spirit ever makes a mistake? Would he ever lead you in a contrary direction to God's word? Why? Because the Spirit and the Word always agree. Now, I'm, I'm going really slow right now. But I want you to get this. I am on an assignment today. And, and I don't want you to pay attention to how I do it. I just want you to get it. So don't expect me to be in some prescribed way of teaching you or sharing this truth with you. Because I'm not sure how to, how to quite feed it to you so you'll get it. But I need you. God needs you. The kingdom needs you to learn under God to be led by your spirit. The spiritually dead are led by the head. To the spiritually deaf, God never speaks. The spiritually blind never see him. People serve idolatry because they have never seen the God they say they worship do anything. Wow. See, this is below the surface. Say it. This is below the surface. How many of you want something below the surface today? Because if you don't, I'm not going to try to force feed you. No, I mean it, man. I'm not, I am not going to try to force feed you. Amen. This is, this is too important to be led by the Holy Spirit. So where does the Holy Spirit reside? On the inward parts of the inward man, deeply within you. How does a child learn to speak? I was at a beautiful dinner the other night with some of the most accomplished people uh, in the state of, of Michigan and, and Ohio. They were, they were all medical doctors. And I wondered why I was there and God told me I was a heart surgeon. So I said, no, that's okay. Then I, I belong at this table. I'm a heart surgeon. But they all had very, very, very high positions. Uh, the University of Michigan, the Ohio State University, uh, directors of entire departments, directors of entire hospitals. There's a gentleman there, so fascinating. He's an ophthalmologist, but he's an ophthalmologist for NASA who did a study that, that showed what happens to astronauts' eyes when they're in space. So he, they're all neurosurgeons and so on and so forth. And it, it was a, a fascinating place to be. But I, I so want to get in your heart that that's not where the Holy Spirit leads you. You can be completely unlearned and be led by the same Spirit that raised up Christ from the dead. You have inside information because you have a direct connection to the God of heaven and earth. The Holy Spirit can go where you cannot go, see what you cannot see, hear what you cannot hear, 
and come back and deposit that within you so you have inside information from another world. So you shared with me, I'm using this as an illustration because of what I have to share today. So you said to me on the front row, I felt in my spirit that I should do a thing, right? And I said, well, then you have to obey your spirit. Now, my daughter is well-trained. She understands that the voice of the movement of the prophet is subject to the prophets. I wish a lot of ministry gifts would learn that. When I go to someone else's church and I'm about to prophesy, especially to someone in that church or doubly especially to someone that labors in that church, I never do it without submitting it to the pastor first. I don't know how many people have come along in here and prophesied our staff out of here. Never submitted to the leadership, you see. So your spirit is quite different than your intellect. Your intellect has to do with your soulish man. Your spirit is born of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, both of which always agree. If you don't get anything today, get this, because I hear people all the time tell me, well, the Holy Spirit told me, and what the Holy Spirit supposedly said was in direct contradiction to the law and the Word of God. So that's not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit cannot violate himself. And it was the Holy Spirit that inspired God's word. The other thing about being led by the Holy Spirit is, it's amazing how confused God is. God spoke to me that we are to be married. No, you were just lustful. Because three years later, God's telling you, you ought to leave his sorry hide. So either God was confused then or God's confused now. One of the two, because God does not contradict himself. So stop saying so much God said until you learn the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will never learn that until you first understand and have the revelation of where that voice comes from. That voice is in your conscience. Your conscience is not your mind. Your conscience is your spirit. So you were sitting there and you felt in your spirit that God was directing you to do a thing. So what did she do? She first submitted it to not only her physical, natural daddy, but her spiritual daddy. She didn't run up here and say, give me the microphone. It's quiet in here. This is so vital, so vital. Uh, Elder Canfield and Miss Paula been serving in this ministry, I don't know, 35 years or something like that. Many years. That's a long time. And, and Miss Paula sent me a text this week and she said, I've been asked to share thus and so at thus and so church. Well, why would she do that? Well, because she's submitting that to her pastor. And she didn't tell me after she'd already said yes, because that's not order. Okay, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm using it in my, in my sphere, in my world. It's the same thing in your house. Oh, well. Oh, well. Same thing in your house. Same thing on your job.
Same thing in the classroom. There's order, there's decorum. The Holy Spirit will not violate that. Don't go to your pastor and say, we've decided to be married, will you bless us? I don't do much marriage counseling. It just, I mean, I just, it just, people don't come. Because they've heard me say this enough that they know I'm not just going to rubber stamp what the two of your bodies got together and decided to do. Because I look you right in the eye and say, nope. Real Talk Kim, who ministers here quite often, said, I'm going to marry this young man. I said, you're going to miss God. And she spent 15 years of her life in hell. In hell. Because she didn't listen. It's quiet in here. Well, don't I have a right? Oh, we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about your rights. You dead person. I can wear what I want. Do you ever drive past a, past a graveyard and hear that? My precious mother lay right here. She did not raise up and say, this is not the dress I wanted to wear. I have a right to wear whatever dress I want to wear. Unless, of course, you're dead. I have a right to go where I want. We'll climb right out of that casket. I am crucified with Christ. Now, I don't know whether you realize it or not, but crucifixion is not a pretty thing. There's some agony there. There's some pain there. There's some not my will. If it be your will, please let this mess pass from me. But nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. For we are not our own. Boy, this culture doesn't like this. This entitlement culture does not like this. This rebellious church does not like this. This selfish, self-centered believer does not like this, Pastor Cal. They don't like this. So if we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, then our will must bow its knee. I'm going to get to this later, hopefully. Maybe I should just set the tone for you today. We are going to learn by the power of the Holy Spirit to surrender our right to be right. I'm going to share with you, it doesn't even matter if you're right. It doesn't matter if God says you can. God told Israel, have a king. You want a king so bad? Have one. The Bible says, God answered their prayers and it sent leanness into their souls. What does that mean? Sometimes we're asking God to allow us to destroy our own lives because we are not being led by the Holy Spirit. We are being led by our own will our own way, what we want, and we make the same mistake Adam and Eve made. We think we know good from evil. They're not shouting me down now. So, and that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes you shouldn't shout me down. Sometimes you should hear with spirit ears and see law and consider. 
Job didn't say, when I consider the Lord, we scream on the Hammond B3 and Miss Lisa strikes up the band and we all shout. Job said, when I consider him, I fear him. There's an awe. There's a holiness. There's a purity. And it is coming to the church. And this is the pathway to revival. Not only when the church gets saved, but when the church gets sanctified. Oh, if I was talking about prosperity, you'd be shouting. If I was talking about physical healing, you'd be shouting. How about we get your spirit fixed? How about we adjust some things on the inside? So you have to learn where that comes from, you see. So Blair is sitting there and she says that. And uh, she says, I feel like in my spirit, now God began to deal with you about that. Uh, how long ago? Over a week ago when we were in Tennessee. Yeah, when we were in Tennessee at, uh, at the wonderful Aaron and Amanda Crabbs, powerful Restoring Hope Church. What a time we had. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with you about it then. But you put that before the Lord. Say, before the Lord. Not your Facebook friends. This is so good. Popular opinion led to the crucifixion of your Savior. <laughs> it was only Joshua and Caleb that said, we are more than able. Everybody else said, let's have nothing to do with this. That's why we don't vote here. We don't vote. Somebody came through next steps and they said, well now, um, uh, if I'm going to be a tither, mm, when do we vote? I said, raise your right hand. Everybody do it right now. Raise your right hand. That's the last time we vote. Right there. That's it. We're led by the Holy Spirit. We're not led by you. We're led by the Holy Spirit. So, you put that, watch, before the Lord. And still yet, it persisted from your spirit, not from your intellect, not from head knowledge, from your spirit. And was still there this morning while Elder G was speaking so forcefully and beautifully, it was there. While Pastor Cal, this is what she told me, while Pastor Cal was here, the more anointed he became, the more that voice was prominent within her. Ah, this is the Holy Spirit. You will learn to navigate through life from here, not from here. I will be very honest with you. When the anointing is very, very strong, very, very rich on my life, the Holy Spirit directs me when I drive. I will sense on the inside of me, don't go that way. Not up here, not, well, I think I'll drive this way because I'll see more deer that way. Now, sometimes I do that. But that usually comes from my head. You understand? So you must learn the difference in those 18 inches between head knowledge and spirit knowledge. Ooh. Wouldn't you like to know how to do that? No one. Okay. Well, Lisa, come on. Let's sing a dismissal song. Nobody wants to know. Would you like to know 
how to do that. Well, let's say it this way, because your pride's in the way. How many of you would like to be able to do that on a more consistent basis than you do now? Oh, that's what I thought. So, uh, did you bring that with you? It's on the front row. All right. All right. Bring that to me. Bring that to me. And what's the young mother's name you were dealing with? Brianna. Brianna. Where's Brianna? Hello, Brianna. Oh, come there. Come here, Brianna. Well, aren't you beautiful? You went to, you went to HPS. You did stand over here. Stand over here. So, Brianna is a graduate. You can come down here with me. So, Brianna is a graduate of HPS. Is it all right if I share? You don't have to whisper, just me. <laughs> so, I was asking her if it's all right to share with you. She is a very, very successful single mom. She, that means she kept her baby when it would have been much more convenient not to. That's what that means. So we celebrate that here. In fact, get on your feet and celebrate every single parent connected to us here, Elkhart Online. So... And, and the Holy Spirit, be seated, the Holy Spirit, according to what you shared with me, directed Brianna about her business and gave her a word about what God was going to do for her business. To move away from her family, to take a big old step of faith where it's scary out there on the wind and the waves. But you know this in your heart. You know this. You know this. So Ashton wanted to bless your business. Okay? And bless you. And the Holy Spirit said for her to sow $100 to you. So you take this. But, but she's a parsley. And what does that mean? That means what gets in the head gets in the body. So that means I'm going to do another hundred, and then Miss Joni's going to do a hundred, and then Austin's going to do a hundred. So that's one, two, three, four. And so we get what's in the head in the body. Since I'm feeling the leading of the Holy Spirit right now, I feel like there are six more people that are going to sow a hundred dollars to this precious single mom. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I got six. Okay. So you all know who you are and you meet Brianna right down here. Look, look at this. Foundation. Yes. My mom came here. My brother was spoke to. And I thank God for you guys for setting the foundation in my life to be able to hear the word of God, be led by him, and to be able to follow him with no fear. God, thank you. Okay, now. Now you're being led. That's a thousand. So the tithe is. 100. 100. We, have, we have camera people that know the word of God. <laughs> That's right. 100. That's $100, right? Okay, so I'll take that. Give that to the toys. Buy $100 worth of toys with that. The other nine people will meet you at the end of the service. Okay? All right. Everybody be seated now. Thank you. 
So, all right, now, now. Nope, I don't have time to do it. No, I don't. It's, is it actually 10 till 12? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to be led by your head either. <laughs> no, this, like, this is really, really important. And, and, and it would take me 40 minutes to do it. And so I'm just, I'm just going to wait. Because, here's why. Here's why. Because I think you've already heard something very, 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 very important. And maybe we should just let that season a little bit on the inside of you. Maybe this week you should spend some time in trial and error being led by the Holy Spirit. Now make no mistake about it, you will make a mistake you are learning hallelujah be seated let me take let me take five minutes of my ten that remain and and tell you that you will make a mistake you will make a mistake the mistake is not in making the mistake the mistake is the fear of trying Because every decision you're making with your head is likely the wrong one. I'm just, I'm just trying to help you. Your born again spirit is the only part of your triune being that came directly from God. It is his breath. Job said there is a spirit in man it is the breath of the Almighty that gives him understanding. When you, when you study it out, you'll find he's not talking about mental understanding. He's talking about being led by the Spirit of God. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, let, me, let, me give you, let me give you a verse. Let me give you a verse. Let me get, goodness, I've been on smart giving three times this morning already. Oh, by the way, with smart giving, you can give any time you want. <laughs> you don't have to wait for a church service. Sometimes I'll be in prayer and God says, so. I just grab my phone and so. Hallelujah. Why? I just led by my spirit. And I've kind of found out something about God. He rarely, he, it's rarely the devil telling you, or yourself telling you to bless somebody. That's almost always God. You can tell because of the resistance. Now we're going we're gonna to bless these children. And you online, you need to give today. $20 will bless an entire child in a family for Christmas. I don't we don't even really do, we haven't done Christmas for years because our joy is to see other families be blessed that don't have anything. Isn't it amazing that on Black Friday, Christians get up at four in the morning. I, I, don't, know if they, I don't know if they'd be here for prayer at 5 a.m., but they'll get up and hit Walmart at four in the morning and trample over people to get things, watch, that the day before they were already thankful for. They're already thankful for what they had. Now they're going to kill one another to get some more of it. Anyway, let me, let me find it here because I, I looked it up. Um, here it is. So, so, uh, First Thessalonians five. Um, 
We'll start at verse 9. We'll start at verse 9. Look it up. I want you to see it with your own eyes and your own Bible. Your own eyes and your own Bible. Verse 9, 1 Thessalonians 5. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Do you believe that? God's not appointed us to wrath. All right, let's continue. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Verse 11, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. So he's saying you're, you're doing well, but you can do better. Watch now. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Look at me. The word admonish is more directly translated correct. So you're supposed to honor those who correct you, who are over you in the Lord. In other words, if you're going to send thank you notes to me, how about sending me notes for what you were admonished for? We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love, not because you like or don't like their beard, but for their work's sake. I'm continuing. And to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. One of the major keys that I will share with you regarding understanding how to be led by the Holy Spirit and live a godly life is just that. You must learn the voice of peace. And you don't know it naturally. This culture does everything it can possibly do with the inspiration of demonic spirits to keep you tied up in such a knot and to keep you so busy and to keep so much information flooding your mind that you never sense peace. So because you never sense it, you don't know how to follow it. Oh, Jesus. Uh, see that none, now I exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Now, he's speaking, of course, to the church. Warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Feeble-minded doesn't mean they're old. It means they're double-minded. Your Bible says, a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. A double-minded person is a person that thinks it is today and isn't sure tomorrow, and maybe it is the next day, and they're like the waves of the sea. They're tossed to and fro. They believe it during prayer cloth, miracle healing, and victory service. But on Tuesday afternoon, when that headache comes back, there's wavering, you see. They're double-minded. And the Bible says, let not that person even think, this is strong, man, even think that they shall receive anything of the Lord. Wow. Wow. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but even father, boy, I think he had Facebook in mind when he wrote verse 15. No, no one render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. 
pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. What's the will of God? That I rejoice evermore, that I pray without ceasing, and that in everything I give thanks. Wow. I want to know the will of God. Here's how you find it. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in everything. And quit criticizing other people. In so doing, verse 19, you will not quench the Holy Spirit. Despise not prophesying. The word of God. Prove all things. Stop being so fleshly, spontaneous, and immediate in all of your reactions. Boy, that, that'll make you just rip the pews up. We are trained in this culture to be impulsive about everything. I feel more light over here. Hold fast that which is good. Watch now. Abstain uh, not from evil, from the very appearance of evil. Now we're getting off the fruit, down the limb, down the trunk, through the dirt, into the root. If the root is bad, the fruit will be bad. Oh, this is so strong. Abstain from, watch me, the appearance of evil. Why? Why? Somebody is watching you. They know you have named the name of Christ and they're watching you. Well, don't I have a right? To go wherever I want to go, drink whatever I want to drink, smoke whatever I want to smoke, wear whatever I want to wear. No, you do not. Here's why. You are not your own. Oh, I'm going to flip you out right now. You do not belong to you. Not your words, not your actions, not your attitudes, not your behavior, nor your conduct belong to you. Somebody is watching you. Now, if I had time, I would take you through the law of grace. Some would say that's a paradox. Some would say that's a seeming contradiction. The law of grace. But I will teach you, all you that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Law and grace are by no means incompatible. They are absolutely one in the same. 
to hell with this damnable false doctrine being perpetrated on the body of Christ that is not producing freedom but in the name of freedom producing spiritual bondage because only he that the son sets free is free indeed and if we go by any other formula than the formula that he laid down it will produce bondage in the name of freedom The prodigal soon realized that his freedom was slavery. And remember, he left, he didn't come out the club. He didn't backslide at the club. He didn't backslide at the bar. He backslid on the 14th row of Sunday morning service where, watch me, his conscience was seared by false preaching. Many there be that sit in pews whose consciences are seared with a hot iron who this day believe a lie and are thereby damned that's god's word that's not rod's word that's god's word leaders in the church that have absolutely no control over what they do or say nothing governed by the holy spirit everything governed by I am spiritual and I have a right. You have no rights. You have no rights. You are not your own. You have been purchased. You want to know how valuable to God you are, that you are not your own. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. to watch this preacher purchase you you are bought with a price and you are not your own and where that should make the church lose its natural mind in rejoicing it rather feels conviction which it interprets as condemnation and turns and walks away from the living life-giving water of god's word i will teach you the law of grace the law of grace can be summed up in one statement. It can actually be summed up in one word. Love. Paul said, I, Paul said, there's nothing wrong with eating meat sacrificed to idols. He said, unless it causes another to stumble. When's the last time you heard somebody say, I could do that, but because I can does not mean I should. Not because I am, a, I am fearful of the wrath of God, but because if I cause by my action, by my conduct, one of these little ones to stumble it would be better 
if I had a millstone tied around my neck and be cast into the sea. Can I use profanity? Well, I don't know, can you? Can I go to a movie where it's blood and gore everywhere? I don't know. Can you? Who's going with you? Who will see you? Who will be influenced by your conduct? I can do all things. Everything is lawful for me. If my conscience condemn or convict me not, and I offend no one through my actions to think less of him because they saw me. This is the law of love. This is what love does. It's about others. It's not about you and your right. God says, do whatever you want to do. Paul said, whether you eat or drink or don't eat nor don't drink. Do it as unto the Lord. So let me just ask you, since I'm, since I'm on that, if, if, if I'm going to use profanity or wear a certain thing, can I do it? Well, can I do it as an offering to him? If you wouldn't drop the F-bomb in his presence, what makes you think you can ever drop it? You're simply saying he's not there. And don't say he doesn't mind. It's not about him. It's about others. It's about your influence. It's about your witness. Can I throw down a shot of whiskey? Well, I don't know, can I? Can I? If you saw me, would it increase your faith? But if you know that I never have and never will allow it to touch my lips because I'm a Nazarite unto God, I've got a calling. Does that increase your faith? Well, then which one shall I do? We always want to make everything so surface. When I said, could I do this? Could I do that? From all of the building, I heard, no. Well, you don't know. You don't know what I can do. I might eat or not eat. I didn't eat a bite of pork for 15 years. I didn't eat a McDonald's for 22 years. Could I? Did you not eat pork because of the Jewish? No, I didn't eat it because I felt in my spirit that I shouldn't. So am I going to look at you eating your sausage McMuffin? and say, thank God I'm not like them. Care? 
careful. Careful. Because let's get off profanity or eating and drinking and let's talk about what you do with your tongue. Let's talk about what you wear. I am so weary, not in this church, because I'm permitted in this church. I am so weary with men and their little Instagram pictures with nothing on but a loincloth that I can't take it. We're not Hollywood entertainers. We're men of God. And let's not even go to the women. Stretch your pants are not one size fits everybody, especially some of y'all. Or 15 inches of cleavage, or five, depending on how well endowed or purchased you are. Do you think some new believer that comes in here and sits on the 14th row wants to see you strutting everything that does not belong to him in front of him as an offering to God? You understand it's not about us. Though there are certain things that are absolute. But under God, when is the church going to grow up and stop being some infant believer for 40 years that's still demanding your right? Not about your right. You have a right to do anything that does not directly contradict the spoken word of God. But there are areas that the Bible leaves up to the believer governed by laws, the law of love, the law of peace, the law of conscience. If my conscience if our conscience condemns us not, that's not what you think about something because you did some study to find some preacher somewhere that would agree with what you had preconceived you wanted. It's not about you. Paul said, I need meat. I need meat sacrificed to idols. That doesn't mean I will. Doesn't mean I should. Doesn't even mean I want to. I think we need God's Holy Spirit to surgically remove from us the want to. Can I? Yeah. Will I? No. Why? Don't want to. I have no desire. Now that doesn't mean that my desire should be your desire. That's why we're not supposed to judge each other. One may eat meat. One may not eat meat. But if I know that eating meat will cause you to stumble, do I care more about my right to meat or your right to Jesus? Which one? Which one? Which one? Billy Graham said it this way, and I'm quitting. Being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby one grows to be more and more 
like Jesus. Yeah. And in that, we find freedom. We have, as Paul called it, a good conscience that offends us not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, would you, I mean, Paul could have said, now this is it, you bunch. There will be no eating meat sacrificed to idols, and that's it, and I'm not going to hear any more about it. That's it. That's not what he said. Here's what he said. How about we all grow up? How about we stop pointing the finger? How about we make our decisions based on others rather than ourselves? Oh, Jesus. That's the good life because that's the God life. Can you give him praise and give him glory? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. Thank you. Everybody's standing. May the cry of our hearts be all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence, daily live. All day, every day. May we be mindful that you are there every moment may it govern our behavior our conduct our witness Jesus forgive us for where we've failed forgive us for being lazy and just wanting a rule for everything Oh God, this day, we desire to be led by your Spirit. Direct us and guide us. And may all those who observe us be able to say, there is one who lives in the presence of God. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. Govern our hearts by peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we thank God for the general of the faith, Pastor Rod Parsley, our pastor. It's not every pulpit that you would hear the truth like that. Aren't we thankful? So grateful. Well, you know, it's holidays here at the Harv, and we don't want you to miss what God is doing. But to our online audience, can we thank them for joining us today? So glad you're with us. God bless you. Holidays here at the Harv. So we are doing Christmas Eve communion together at 5.